This is part one of a two-part video where I compare these two lenses. This is the Nikkor 100-400, and this is the 500PF. This video is gonna feature the 100-400, so if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do that. Click the bell so that you know when the second video featuring the 500PF is up, and then I'll be able to compare the two and tell you what I think of each one. So I'm gonna take this out to one of my favorite places where the birds are doing a lot of shopping. Come on, let's go. It's breeding season here in Florida, and birds are busy shopping for the perfect deal on nesting material. That's a winner. Or not. This great blue heron has found a much better deal, but it's buried in there behind all of those flowers. There you go. Put your back into it. You can do it. Oh, maybe not. Apparently finding the perfect nesting material isn't an easy job. Maybe that's why this limpkin is more interested in searching for food. I have to give it to these birds. They are persistent and persistence really pays off. Wow, that is a huge stick. Don't drop it, don't, oh. Much like the egret, the limpkin decides to give it another try. And Butterbeak over there has finally managed to get a firm hold of that big stick. Now you just have to somehow fly out of here with that thing. You can do it. Our limpkin was successful too. That's a nice tasty clam in its beak. Our great blue heron has also managed to get the perfect branch, but it seems a little hesitant to fly. And that might be why. Oh, oh, that's not very graceful. All of these birds have drawn the attention of the spoonbills. And when a spoonbill comes flying right at the camera like this, it's time to capture some photos. It's not every day that I get to sit a few feet from these beautiful creatures, and thanks to the modern tech stuffed into the Z9, you get a front row seat as well. Look at this bird's amazing color. Its breeding plumage is simply spectacular. Check out that red coloring on its backside right above its legs. And as its wings open once again, we get a good look at the light orange on its shoulders. And in this last image, we can really see how this bird's shoulders are painted bright red. I love this pose with its head just barely visible, its wings perfectly symmetrical, and look at those feet. Awesome. One of the things that I've learned about the spoonbills in this location is they don't like to be alone and it isn't long until another one comes flying in to join its friend. I'm truly blessed to be able to sit this close to one of these beauties. And this one seems to regard me with a coy, cautious curiosity. Hey there, buddy. We're on the same team here. Let's get some portrait shots so we can get an even closer look at these beauties. Now this is an animal in its environment, and it is a gorgeous work of art. It looks like it's been hand painted, but check out those bright red eyes. How is that even possible? Let's take a closer look at them. Wow, they look like little jewels, and this angle makes for one weird perspective. Isn't it interesting how far this bird's eyes protrude from the side of its head? I guess it has to be able to see around that big spoonbill. Let's get a different angle. Oh, wow. That's just unbelievable to me. That eye, that leathery head with the black nape. You can even see its external acoustic meatus. That's fancy jargon for its ear hole. <laughs> you can see it right there. There's no question about the rendering ability of this lens. It renders incredible detail. What do you think? Are the spoonbills beautiful or are they ugly? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get a conversation started. Hear what everybody thinks about these birds. Speaking of beautiful birds, our great blue heron is back and it appears to be pondering life as the cool morning breeze shuffles its feathers. Let's use that zoom lens and get a closer look. That's better, but I'd like to get even closer. I'm gonna switch into crop mode. Whoa, now that's close. And this is one of my favorite features of the Z9. Being able to crop into 4K video to get closer is awesome. And look at those gorgeous colors this bird has. This bird is all decked out in hopes of attracting a mate. 
And here she comes now with wings and full display. I love the way the breeding plumage catches the current of air caused by her landing, sending them up in arcs that look like brushstrokes in a painting. Here's a much better look at that plumage. See all those feathers right there? That's what I'm talking about. And I think those feathers did the trick. Her mate is obviously attracted to her because he picks up this tiny old brown twig. But I think she's a little disappointed in his offering because she picks up this giant piece of grass and looks his way. Not wanting to lose her interest, he grabs a big leafy bush complete with tiny little flowers. Oh, it's love. I'm not going to show you how this ends, but let's just say there should be some new heron chicks in the area very soon. Let's check in with the spoonbills. Hey there, buddy. It's me again. What are you doing there? You look kind of busy. Oh, you're looking for nesting material too. And as I sit a few meters from this one, I remember why I offer photography workshops at this location. It is the perfect place to teach bird and flight photography and it's a target rich environment as you can see. I'll drop a link in the description if you'd care to join me. Here comes another one now. Let's get some more shots. These birds are flying in mixed light and the wind is steering them in such a way that most of their body falls into shadow. If only the wind could shift just a little bit, but the Z9 seems to like these birds because the autofocus works the best I have seen yet in this particular environment. The real challenge here is nailing the exposure and the EVF on the Z9 makes that a little challenging. Determining exposure from just looking through the EVF is not quite as simple as other cameras. Nikon needs to add some live highlights or zebras that would make things much better. But one thing that I'm noticing about the lens is how good it feels in my hands. It's solid but not too heavy and the controls all seem very well placed. Keeping the camera steady is pretty easy too, even when you're panning and the vibration reduction on this lens is the smoothest I have seen on a Nikon yet. Never a dull moment photographing pink birds, especially when you're able to capture these amazing vertical wing positions and the 20 frames per second makes it easier to pick and choose exactly which shots you want. It looks like the wind direction is shifting and now I can capture the shots I was hoping for. And as this beautiful creature makes its approach, it turns just slightly and the light starts hitting the underside of its wings, revealing colors that just don't seem natural, but they are. The lighting in this location is just perfect, and this shot is my favorite from the morning. Did you have a favorite? Let me know in the comments below. And remember, this is part one of two, so make sure you subscribe and click the bell to be notified when part two goes live. Don't forget to click the thumbs up and share this video too. That's super helpful for me.